For the past few years now, Assassin's Creed fans have been asking Ubisoft for an Assassin's Creed game set in feudal Japan, where you could play as a, a samurai, ninja, assassin type. And what Ubisoft is giving their fans is uh, Vikings. Fortunately, Sucker Punch has come out with a brilliant, beautiful, awesome game which could satisfy Assassin's Creed fans as well as anyone else called Ghost of Tsushima, available now for PlayStation 4 by Sucker Punch. This game is absolutely wonderful to play. And here is my official review of Ghost of Tsushima. So just like of all my reviews, I go over the pros, the cons, and of course my final verdict, by the way, for everybody that played Ghost of Tsushima, spoiler free of course, your thoughts, your views and opinions, your pros, cons, and verdict regarding Ghost of Tsushima, welcome below in the comment section. Alright, let's get into the pros. This game has a fantastic story and setting in feudal Japan around the Mogul invasion of Tsushima, which is an actual island off of Japan. Now, the clans featured are not real clans, historically. But the protagonist is Jin Sakai. He is a samurai from the uh, clan Sakai. He is also the nephew of Lord Shimura, who is the Jitu of uh, Shushima. He's kind of like the governor. He's the guy that runs the island. And uh, they have a, like a father-son bond between uh, Lord Shimura and uh, Jin. So you get to see that bond develop and some backstories, as well as other characters that are introduced throughout the events of Ghost of Tsushima. All of them are fantastic, by the way. This game has epic, horrific, and even heartbreaking moments from start to finish. And no microtransactions. Yes, no microtransactions is definitely another pro when it comes to Ghost of Tsushima. And for the record, if they ever have a story DLC or some story DLCs, or hell, if they do decide to throw out some skins, I will support Sucker Punch. You know, shut up and take my money. I'll be glad to support this game. So anyways, continuing uh, with a great story and characters. For a video game, you have to have awesome gameplay. And Ghost of Tsushima is no exception. You can play between being a, a samurai. You can also go in as a ghost sometimes. Or an assassin, ninja, whatever you wish to call it. So you have uh, some freedom most of the time between how you wish to approach enemies, either as a, a samurai head-on, or sneak in, being stealthy like a ghost, an assassin, ninja type. So there's a strategy, there's tactics involved, different approaches you can take, along with uh, upgradable katanas, sword kits, bows, armor, as well as additional weapons that you will gain throughout playing Ghost of Tsushima and ranking up. And you also get perks for uh, the ability trees. There's a variety of abilities you can upgrade. All of them are great. And each one caters to, you know, depending on your style, how you wish to play Ghost of Tsushima. There's also a lot of uh, cosmetics for the various sword kits, bows, armor, as well as uh, straw hats, uh, masks, headbands, helmets. There's even some different saddles you can acquire. And there's also uh, different dyes for the uh, various uh, bows and uh, armor. So there's a variety of uh, customization when it comes to all those items and more for Ghost of Tsushima. The world of Ghost of Tsushima is absolutely beautiful. And photo mode, I love photo mode. It's so freaking addicting. You'll be galloping around on your horse or just running around, cutting down Mongols and bandits. And you'll stop for a moment. And you'll just realize what a beautiful game this is. And you're just tempted to go into photo mode, move the camera around, change the time of day, change the weather, change the different filters. There's a lot of options when it comes to photo mode. And I have enjoyed taking photos and sharing photos in my Discord. And other Ghost of Tsushima fans have been doing the same. It's amazing how wonderful photo mode is. The options as well as the world itself that Sucker Punch created, which basically encourages you just to stop for a moment and take a photo, move it around, change the time of day. So yeah, photo mode is definitely a big pro in my opinion. Uh, there's different stances you get. Uh, you start off with one stance, and then eventually as you rank up and do various activities, 
you will uh, end up getting a total of four stances, which uh, fight uh, against different enemies. Like you have a sword stance, which is, I think, stone stance, and you get, you know, new ones along the way. Each one is merited towards countering specific enemy types. But you start off with stone stance, which is basically sword v. sword. There's uh, standoffs as well as duels. There's various uh, ways to parkour around rocks and cliffs and uh, some other collectibles scattered throughout the map for you to get. Uh, horse mechanics are pretty solid. I'm actually impressed with the horse mechanics. As somebody who plays Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online, the horse mechanics are different in Ghost of Tsushima, but it doesn't take long to get used to the horse mechanics. And to be honest, I feel like the intelligence of the uh, horse in Ghost of Tsushima is smarter than our horse in Red Dead Redemption 2 or Red Dead Online. Whereas in those games, I'm always hitting trees or rocks. And uh, Shishima, your horse manages to, to go around trees and rocks with relative ease. The music. The music, the score of Ghost of Tsushima uh, goes in so many different directions. There's epic moments. There's moments of pure beauty in the music, which goes along with the world itself. The music, for the most part, is very fitting, depending on the scene you happen to be in throughout the events of Ghost of Tsushima, or simply just, you know, galloping around, running around, parkouring, or getting to the, the top of a temple if you want to do that. So, yeah, the music is great. Along with the characters, as I mentioned already, uh, the supporting characters that you come across are very well written. They all have uh, different uh, backstories, uh, things that happen in their lives. And there's a variety of different mission types as well. You have the main story, which appears in gold. But then you also get uh, character tales with your allies. You get to uh, play out various arcs with them and see their story, their background, and help them throughout the events of Ghost of Tsushima. So there's character tales along with the uh, side missions and when you'll uh, help out random NPCs throughout the world. Along with the uh, mythic tales. I highly recommend the mythic tales. They'll appear as uh, blue icons. And Yamamoto, the storyteller, he does a great job telling you these various stories. Uh, you can get abilities by completing them, or uh, armor types. They're definitely worth doing. Uh, and, of course, uh, various other activities like uh, liberating villages, towns, uh, camps, uh, strongholds from the Mongols, uh, bamboo strike uh, sites all across the map to increase your resolve, as well as uh, fox dens, shrines, springs, and more. There's a variety of uh, difficulty for you. If you wish to uh, start off easy, you got an easy option. Medium is uh, how I played it from start to finish. Uh, there's a hard mode. And just recently through a patch, they added a lethal mode. So you have four difficulty settings to choose from for Ghost of Tsushima. And uh, the modes. Uh, this is one thing that people really do appreciate about Ghost of Tsushima and Sucker Punch is the different modes to choose from when you start the game. And by the way, for the difficulty for these modes, you can always change it while you're playing the game. So if you start off on easy and you feel like it's too easy, you can bump it up to medium. Or if you're playing on hard and you feel like it's too difficult, you can bump it down to medium. And the same thing is with these modes. So there's a variety of modes to choose from. You can do it in English with the English voice actors. Or you can do it in Japanese with the Japanese voice actors. By the way, that's another pro. The English voice actors and the Japanese voice actors both did a fantastic job voicing their characters. There's also a really cool black and white mode you can try out. The audio is a little different with the black and white mode, but it still looks cool. It's, it's worth experimenting with. And if you don't like it, you can always switch back to one of the other modes in Ghost of Tsushima. Those are the pros. And here are a few cons. In all my reviews, there are cons, including Ghost of Tsushima. During duels, the resolve does not max out. So whatever resolve you happen to have, whether it's three dots or all the dots you've managed to acquire, that's what you have going into the duel. So a little warning, not trying to spoil the game for you, but before you go into a duel, you might want to consider getting uh, your resolve points, or your resolve dots up to max before you go into a duel. I wish it would automatically max that out, but it does not. And in a few situations uh, throughout playing Ghost of Tsushima, I found myself in a duel where I only had a couple of bubbles and it was a real pain to beat. I died quite a few times. Uh, being a PlayStation 4 exclusive, I find this to be a con because I really would love for uh, players that only have an Xbox or a PC to be able to pick up this game as well. It's a great game and uh, PlayStation 4 players are lucky to have this. 
It just sucks at the same time that it's exclusive. And in my opinion, that is a con for everybody else on Xbox as well as PC. Uh, stance holding hand problem I encountered throughout uh, Ghost of Tsushima. This does happen a few times. Now, at the beginning, obviously, in the game, you have a bit of a tutorial going on. And whenever you get a new ability, there's a little bit of a quick tutorial. But I did notice, uh, even later on in the game, that I would go up against a certain enemy type, and the game would basically freeze on me and encourage me or force me to switch stances. Now, you're better off switching to a stance uh, going up against a specific enemy type. It's not necessary, but the game just wants to hold your hand when it comes to the stances. The truth is, I understand at the beginning, but once you have all four stances and you have an idea how the stance system works, how to switch between the different stances, then the game should just leave you alone to use whatever stand you prefer. But there were a few times that kind of annoyed me because you'd be in the middle of a fight, and then all of a sudden the game would freeze on you, and you're like, what the hell game I'm trying to play? Don't tell me which stance to switch to. So, in my opinion, that's definitely a con. The next con is perhaps a temporary con. No Game Plus. Now, in case you're wondering what Game Plus is, once you beat a game like uh, Batman Arkham City, for example, and countless others, you had the ability to replay the game on a higher difficulty, but with everything you acquired the first playthrough, like all your upgrades, all your armor types, all your abilities, but you would simply start over the game on a higher difficulty. And the reason why I consider this to be a quote-unquote temporary con is because... People have been asking Sucker Punch to add a Game Plus to Ghost of Tsushima. Now, about a week ago, they got Lethal Mode, as I mentioned, and it shows how well Sucker Punch communicates with their fan base. They do a great job, by the way. This is an additional pro, is that their uh, social media on Twitter is fantastic. It's awesome. Anytime they have uh, somebody that gets platinum, uh, Ghost of Tsushima social media responds, and that's great. I know that's a pro mixed into the cons, but I feel like eventually we will get a Game Plus added to Ghost of Tsushima. At least I sincerely hope so. And once they do add a Ghost of Tsushima Game Plus mode, I'm definitely going to be going back and playing through Ghost of Tsushima again by Game Plus. The final con I'll come up with, can't name your horse. And this is one I understand. Yes, the dialogue is pre-scripted, pre-written, pre-voiced by the English and Japanese voice actors. I get it. But I would have preferred to just be able to name my horse. As somebody that uh, has a certain name that he likes to use for all of his horses, <laughs> I would have preferred just being able to just type in Galaxy Traveler. But I called him Galaxy Traveler anyways. But uh, anyways, it's a small silly con. I know. But those are the pros. Those are the cons. Here is my final verdict. This is the Assassin's Creed game that a lot of Assassin's Creed fans have been wanting for a very, very long time. But leave it to Sucker Punch to not only deliver, but to go above and beyond what Assassin's Creed has become as of late. Instead of Vikings, you get to be a samurai or a ghost, ninja, assassin, whatever you wish to call it. The options, the world, the characters, the moments you have. There's so many epic moments in this game. There's uh, so many heartbreaking times from start to finish that you see. It's just fantastic. And I absolutely loved my playthrough of Ghost of Tsushima. I mean, there were some salty moments, especially during duels. <laughs> but overall, this is one of my favorite games I've had. In a while. The last game I, I would say I really enjoyed playing was Red Dead Redemption 2 when it came out. And that was like nearly two years ago. So yes, Ghost of Tsushima. If you're on PS4, if you love open world games, if you like, uh, I guess, the assassin type games like Assassin's Creed, you definitely should consider getting Ghost of Tsushima. It was wonderful. The sword fighting, the parrying, the blocking, the strats, the tacticals, the options you have, the variety, the customization, the cosmetics, the world itself, photo mode, everything I mentioned fantastic and hopefully like i mentioned uh sucker punch will come out with a game plus mode sooner rather than later and like i said if they come out with story dlcs i will definitely consider picking them up because i loved my time in ghost of tsushima and i'm not an achievement hunter i'm not a person that goes into a game and, and does 100 percent. but i have done almost everything except for two of the collectibles i have not complete 
I've done the main story. I've done the character stories, the mythic tales, all the NPC missions. I've done all the uh, shrines, fox dens, all the bamboo strikes, all of the uh, springs. I've gotten closer to getting 100% in this game than uh, previous other games. That's how much I've loved my time in Ghost of Tsushima. And I definitely think this deserves, at the very least, to be nominated for Game of the Year 2020. At the very least. In my personal opinion, if I was one of the judges and I had a vote, I would be voting for Ghost of Tsushima for Game of the Year 2020. That's how I feel about this game. I absolutely loved playing it. And I look forward to a future opportunity, whether it's on the PlayStation 5 or uh, like a Game Plus mode, to go back and play through it again. And I even played it through on a Japanese mode with the Japanese voice actors and actresses, which I enjoyed. But I think through my second playthrough, I'll switch to English so I can get a little taste of both and a little back and forth. But both are fine. Like I mentioned, the voice actors, voice actresses did a great job, both the English cast and the Japanese. So absolutely recommend Ghost of Tsushima. If I was to rate it, I would say 9 out of 10 because I personally don't believe in perfect scores. There's no such thing as a perfect game, a perfect movie, or a perfect TV show, but this game is definitely damn close. So I highly recommend Ghost of Tsushima. And uh, for those of you that play Ghost of Tsushima, I'm interested in what you thought about the game. Spoiler free, of course. Uh, your thoughts, your views, your opinions, your likes, your dislikes, pros, cons, and verdict regarding Ghost of Tsushima. Welcome below in the comments section.